Uh, good morning, everybody. Got the, I'll, I'll start with the apologies. Matt, Matt contacted me. It must be about 18 months ago and said, we've got this great idea. We're going to have a, uh, a big event in Nottingham. And it's, it's fantastic, but you know, it's, it literally is standing room only, which is, uh, shows, how, shows how things are, are progressing with the PWI and with the, the track engineering community. I guess as, as, as well as seeing the, uh, the, the, the program director for, for track, uh, I could also have put on there as well uh, uh, Deputy President of the, of the PWI. I was hugely proud in, uh, in May to be uh, elected as, as Deputy President and then next year I will become President of the PWI for, for two years. I think it's, it's hugely important that you know, we, we have a, a strong uh, professional body, that we have a strong learned society and, and events like this are just fantastic. So I thought we'd, we'd, start with a, uh, we'd start by talking about safety. And I thought I'd just give you a few photographs of you know, things, to, things to provoke some thought, uh, you know, things that, the sort of things that you would never ever want to see uh, on any of our work sites. That's what happens if you don't issue safety glasses. Yeah. And if the ladder's not long enough, there's always a solution. <laughs> no, the cigarette. The guy on the left is called Jack. <laughs> this is one of my favourites. They play a Russian roulette with cars. Right, so that's uh, just to, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, some thought-provoking pictures on safety to get us started. Now, I, I've deliberately not got onto the detail of uh, formation and drainage. There are uh, a list of brilliant speakers to follow me and for me to try and pretend that I could uh, uh, know, more, know more about this subject than, uh, than the speakers that have been aligned. You would all know I was a fraud. So I thought, well, what can I, what can I bring today? So I thought, actually, I'll provide more of a, a general holistic business update uh, as to what's going on in the, uh, in the world of network rail at the moment. And I think when you look on uh, something, I, I always like to just write down, these are the assets that we look after. You know, and many of those assets are, are looked after by the, uh, the, the, the permanent way community. Um, and it's, a, it's an awful lot of things that we do. Um, and we do occasionally have some challenges in, uh, in, in doing some of that. Now, I, I thought I'd just go through the various reviews that are underway at the moment. About, for, for those of you that have been around in the industry a while, you, you'll know that about every, five, <coughs> about every five years, the government announced a whole load of reviews on the, uh, on the railway. So it's about, uh, it's about five years since the McNaughty report, so it was sort of due. So uh, we, we've got a whole load of reviews that are going on at the moment. And the, the first review is the, is, is the Bow Review. It's uh, led by uh, Dame Colette Bow. And that's looking at the way, that we, uh, the way that we calculated, the way that we produced the CP5 uh, volumes and costs, and how did that work. Uh, and what was the role of the DFT, what was the role of the URR, what was the role of Network Rail, uh, what did we get right, what did we not get right, uh, and what can we learn for, uh, for CP6. Um, the report is due at the end of October, uh, and that will set us up ready for how are we going to approach things going forward. As uh, the uh, Hendy Review, which is undertaken by our new chairman, Sir Peter Hendy, it's basically we... Uh, we, we were allowed £38.5 billion pounds in our regulatory settlement. Uh, and even though it sounds a really, really big number, it's not enough to do everything that we said we were going to do. Uh, so part of what Peter Hendy is doing is saying, what can we, you know, can we come up with a, almost a re-baseline plan that he can agree with the DFT, agree with the government, and say, this is what we will now commit to do for the, for the rest of CP5 and going on into, uh, into CP6. 
and that should be uh, uh, that should be completed by by November. And then the, the last review, which is uh, underway, uh, which was interestingly commissioned by the the Chancellor rather than on the, the Treasury rather than by the uh, Department for Transport, uh, is what's called the Shaw Review, uh, undertaken by Nicola Shaw, who's the CEO of High Speed One. And that's looking into the, the future organisational design shape of the, uh, uh, of the railway. Uh, and that report should be uh, available in time for the budget next year. So that's sort of spring, spring next year to inform the Chancellor uh, ready, for, ready for the budget. You're all probably thinking, so, so what does this mean to Network Rail and what does this mean to my company and what does this mean to me? Uh, and you wouldn't be alone in asking those questions. They are certainly questions that I've asked and I'm sure most of us in this room that have read about the reviews have asked. Um, what we know is that the electrification of the Midland Main Line, electrification across the Pennines has been uh, paused or, or put back in the, in the programme. Uh, I think in the in the railway after school, but we uh, we never actually cancel things. We just move them to the right in the program. You know, there's a uh, you know. So uh, when we, we we never cancel the track renewals, we just say we can't do it. Then. We're going to do it a year later or two years later or when we can agree the agree the access. So everything is sort of known. It's just a case of what's the what's the time sequence. So two schemes pushed to the right uh, into. Uh, CP6 into CP7, I don't know when they will come back into the plan. And then I put a series of question marks on the slide, because actually beyond that, nobody knows. There's an awful lot of speculation, you know, some, you know, every time I pick up the, uh, the press cuttings, there's a, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and this is at risk and the Chancellor wants to do this and the Department of Transport wants to do that and the ORR thing is, and at the moment it's all just opinion. And everybody's got lots and lots of opinions, uh, but at the moment we just don't know. Uh, within my bit of the business, uh, working jointly uh, with the with the professional head David Godley's team, we have been doing various scenarios. So we have been looking and saying, what happens if we, uh, on a you know, start off with the, the baseline? This is as is. This is the plan. This is the money. This is what we're going to do. Uh, and then we've done various scenarios that said if out of the overall review, live within your means of 38 and a half billion, if we had to cut 100 million, this is what we'd do, if we had to cut 200 million, this is what we'd do, if we had to cut 300 million, this is what we'd do, and if we had to cut 400 million, this is what we'd do. So we've done those uh, five scenarios, as is, and four other scenarios, and that's our contribution uh, to, the, to the overall debate. I'll be honest, once you start getting into some of those higher scenarios, as, as professional track engineers, you start to look at some of the things that we wouldn't be able to do, uh, and it does make you feel very uncomfortable. Uh, but that is what we have. That is what we've submitted. Uh, David Godley and his uh, and, and his team uh, have done a very good job at articulating this is what we wouldn't be able to do, and this would be the consequences for the, the network and the overall risk. And we have now submitted that. Uh, every other part of the business has done exactly the same. So all of those things have gone into the melting pot and in a month or so or a couple of months time then we will know this is what the this is what the decision is. And then we'll have certainty of this is how much money you've got, this is what work you've got to deliver, and then and then we can get on with things. But at the moment nobody knows. We are all in a process. So I thought I'd uh, I'd talk a little bit about the uh, uh, the PWI. I think it's I think it's fantastic that we've got you know 150 people in the room and you know, uh, it is standing room only, uh, which is, which is great. And I think we are always going to need forums where we can share share best practice and knowledge. You know, the as the industry broke up over the last uh, 20 25 years, and you know, there's probably 20 different companies represented in this room. We need a place where we can get together and share knowledge and share best practice and challenge ideas. Uh, and the PWI uh, provides that and it, it has done for many years and it continues to do that. Um, I think it's, it's great for those of you that aren't aware, uh, a few months ago the PWI was formally affiliated with the Engineering Council and is now allowed to uh, create char confer chartered engineers, incorporated engineers, and engtechs. I know there are a lot of my team 
are uh, already going through that uh, going through that route. It's it's for 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 Peeway engineers. It's you know sometimes they have to choose: do I go through the civils route? Do I go through the mechanicals route? And neither of them necessarily are quite suited to being a Peeway engineer. Actually, now we've got our, our own route for for Peeway engineers to take them through to be uh, professionally recognised, which is great. Um, we are growing individual and uh, uh, corporate membership, not least of which whenever we get people together we give them a great lanyard and shame them. Uh, yeah, I, I mean Brian, I would hang your head in shame. I'll tell you, I, I will loan you my, I'll loan, as, I, as I leave Brian, I'll loan you my blue lanyard. Uh, the, uh, yeah, we don't normally shame the speakers to be fair, we normally it's just the guests. But, uh, uh, but uh, individual membership is on the up. Uh, actually being able to uh, create chartered engineers, eng techs, I eng, uh, can only help that. And we've also started uh, a corporate uh, uh, membership, which London Underground and Network Rail were the first corporate members about 18 months ago. Uh, and progressively, uh, we have been uh, encouraging our uh, community, our supply chain, uh, to get involved, uh, and that is a, an, an increasing uh, source of membership. It, each corporate member, for, for those of you that are, uh, whose companies are corporate members, they get, at events like this, they get free places. So it's worth, uh, uh, it's worth knowing if your company is a corporate member, because it means you can come to events like this for, for free. And I think one of the things I said before is, you know, there's, there's three different reviews going on. Nobody knows what the outcomes of those are going to be. Uh, almost inevitably, there will be some change. Uh, but I don't know what that is going to be. But the PWI, in all of the various changes that we've had over the last 25, 30 years since, uh, since privatisation, the PWI has always been there as a constant where professional engineers uh, can meet uh, and swap notes. And I think that's, that's the real strength of the PWI, and we need to you know, constantly fall back on that. Is, it is the constant where we uh, we can uh, meet as uh, as professional engineers. I thought I'd better now start to introduce the uh, introduce the day. As I said, I won't get into anything uh, overly technical in case I get uh, found out. Uh, but these are a couple of my favourite pictures, which uh, I use quite regularly in presentations, and just just show how things have uh, how things have progressed over the uh, uh, over the last hundred years or so. Uh, we have. We have some huge challenges, and I think when we start getting into earthworks formation and drainage, I think sometimes it's the forgotten asset. We, we spend a lot of money doing stuff in the top 300, 400, 500 mil, but actually the stuff that's going on underneath is often 100, 150 years old and has never been touched. And if it gets, you know, if it, if it starts to get blocked up and not work properly, we can be renewing the track on top every five or ten years, but actually we've got to fix the problems, uh, the, the problems deeper down. And I don't think as, a, as an industry we have spent enough time thinking about what's going on you know, a metre, maybe even a metre and a half down below the, uh, below the track. So events like the day actually starting to, starting to have that debate is, is, is really, really good. We had the, the privilege recently of, uh, or over the last six weeks, of, uh, of renewing a lot of Brunel's infrastructure. Uh, and we renewed 1.8 miles through Box Tunnel, or we lowered uh, 1.8 miles through Box Tunnel, and we went right down to the, to the top of the drainage. Uh, and part of what we were doing was inspecting the, uh, inspecting the underlying infrastructure. And, you know, and I've got to give it to him and the people that did it. They built a bloody good infrastructure, because uh, you know, a lot of the underlying systems are still as good today as they were uh, 150 years ago. So uh, if it's done properly, it will last a long time. Unfortunately, not all of it was built to those, to those same standards. There's various uh, categories of work, there's various types of treatment that we, that we need to specify, and, and I'm sure you are going to uh, go, through those, uh, go through those today. I thought I'd just give you some uh, some pictures as to uh, just to, to start you to start your thinking about uh, what happens when things don't quite go right. And uh, yeah, Brunel's dream was an awful lot better than that one. So th these are the sort of these are the sort of challenges that we 
that we face as uh, uh, as engineers. But part of the part of the challenge we have is in order to do formation uh, or to get down into the formation and drainage systems, often you know you're going to have to shut the railway, and you're going to have to shut the railway for a long time, and you're going to go down to a meter and a meter and a half and uh, and treat some of the underlying problems. So some of the challenges that we face as as engineers and innovators is how can we keep the trains running but fix the underlying formation issues or how can we do it in such a, a modular way that allows us to uh, 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 do it in eight hours per night, a bit like high output, but how can we do high output for, uh, for some of the underlying problems. So a modular way, trains run during the day, we turn up at night and treat the infrastructure. So some, some real exciting innovations in that space at the moment. Uh, and you, you can see there, you can see there the challenges that we face. Uh, there are some challenges. There are an awful lot of ideas. There are an awful lot of innovations. Uh, some of them groundbreaking. Uh, some of them uh, world leading. Some of them network real very very rarely exerts intellectual property on things, and some of them are so are so world leading that we've actually exerted our intellectual property on uh, uh, on, on some things uh, because we think they will have value around the world over uh, over the next few years. And I'm sure you're going to talk about uh, all of those uh, all of those today. Um, and, and and I guess there are probably a whole lot of other ideas in the room. You know, there, there are there's an awful lot of challenge. In the the bit that's you know a meter underground, uh, and it isn't going to go away. And I'm sure that the conversations that we have on what we're going to do in CP6 and CP7 and CP8 are increasingly going to start to fo to focus on the uh, earthworks and the formation and the drainage systems. So you know today's great opportunity for people to to share their views, share their knowledge, uh, and maybe if some of you go away and think, actually, I've got an idea, and that. You know, in a year or two's time, that, that that creates another solution, then that would be great as well.